What's good, everybody? In today's video, we're going to be talking about factoring trinomials and polynomials, and I'm going to show you guys some very helpful tips on how to do this. But before we start, let's talk about the different types of polynomials. So when we talk about the different types of polynomials, these are classified by the number of terms. So if you have one term, this is a monomial. Two terms, right? Binomial, just like bicycle, two, right? So we have binomial two, trinomial, right? We know that that word tri means three. And then if we have four or more terms, we just refer to it as a polynomial. And what you guys need to understand before we go on is that these are all different versions of polynomials, okay? And when it comes to factoring, what we're basically looking for are the two binomials that would multiply to give us a trinomial. And I'm going to walk you through that process right now. So we have x squared plus 5x plus 6. So when we're factoring, guys, there's just some very important rules. So C, if you look in the top left corner of our screen, we have, we have some very important notes there. And when C is positive like in this problem, that means that the, those factors are going to have the same sign, whether they're both positive or they're both negative. Now, on the other hand, if C is negative, it's a different way to approach that, but we're going to get into that later in the video. So to start this problem out, we're going to write the factors. So that's the numbers that multiply to give us 6. We have 1 times 6, 2 times 3. And our goal, right, after we write out the factors, we want to pick the two factors that when we combine them by adding or subtracting them, they will give us that middle term. So they're going to add to give us 5. So in a problem like this, our answer would be x plus 2 times x plus 3. And to quickly check this, guys, all we have to do is multiply it back together. So once I multiply x times x, I'll get x squared. x times 3 will give me plus 3x. 2 times x will give me plus 2x. And 2 times 3 will give me plus 6. So when we combine these back, when we combine these by adding like terms, right, we're going to get that trinomial that we started off with. And this is what we talk about when we're talking about factoring. We're breaking down that problem to see what we multiply to get the answer. So let's go back down and let's, let's try a different problem and use those important rules. So in our second problem, we have x to the second power minus 11x plus 24. And remember, when we start this problem off, we always want to look at c. So I look at c, right? c is positive. So that lets me know that my factors, they're, they're going to have the same sign, whether they're both positive or both negative. So let's write these factors out real quick, right? We have 1 times 24. 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. Now, after we write the factors out, guys, we pay attention to the middle term. And when we look at this middle term, we should know, because it's negative 11, that our factors are both going to be negative. And I'll explain to you how I know. So let's, let's look at this, right? 1 plus 24, 1 minus 24. That will never give us 11. We could cross that out. 12 and 2, we could either get 12 plus 2 for 14, 12 minus 2 for 10. So we still don't get 11. But when I go down to 8 and 3, if I add 8 plus 3, I could get 11, right? So that, so we already, we found our factors now. Now we need to think about the sign. So let's set this up. So I'm going to put, x and 8, and then we're going to put x and 3, because we know the factors, we know the numbers that we're working with. Now it has to be the sign. So we know that when we add these two numbers, we're going to get a negative 11, but when we multiply, we get 24. So the only way we could get a positive number if we multiply is if both my factors are negative. And we're going to multiply this back right now just to double check our answer. 
So when we multiply our x's, we're going to get x to the second power minus 3x. And then when we take our negative 8, we're going to have negative 8 times x, which gives us negative 8x. And then negative 8 times negative 3, which gives us positive 24. And if you guys remember from our previous videos on how to add integers, when two numbers have the same side, we just add them and keep the sign. So when I combine negative 3 and negative 8, that's going to give me negative 11x. And once we combine those like terms, we could double check and say that, hey, this is the right answer. Okay? But let's say we have a problem where our C is negative because we spoke about that. How does the problem change when C is negative now? So let's scroll on down. Let's change colors to purple. So I have a problem like this. I have m to the second power plus 3n minus 28. So like we said, we identified c. It's negative 28. What that lets us know that, hey, it's negative. So that means one of my factors has to be positive. One has to be negative. That's the only way we could get a negative answer when we multiply. So we write out our factors now, right? We have 1 times 28, 2 times 14, and 4 times 7. I think I got most of them. If I missed one, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. We all make small mistakes sometimes. So now we're looking at our factors, guys. If I want to get a positive 3 in the middle, the only factors that I could probably use are 4 and 7, right? So let's box this off, and now let's write our factors in parentheses. Oops, I don't know the sign yet. Let's write our factors in parentheses, and let's determine the signs for each of them. So when C is negative, guys, we have a negative 28. That means it's the, the factors, one's positive, one's negative. So if we focus on... our middle term, that B, we have a positive 3. And my, 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 my very helpful tip when we have opposite signs for our factors, the larger number or the larger factor will always take the sign of the middle term. So automatically, I already know that 7 being a larger number has to be positive if I want to get a positive 3 when I add. And then 4 is negative. Okay? And when we check this back and we multiply, we'll get m to the second power minus 4m, right? And then we're going to go now and multiply 7 times m and 7 times negative 4. So we'll get plus 7m minus 28. Now we're combining our like terms, which are these two middle terms. And when, we sub when we're combining like terms with opposite signs, we subtract and keep the sign of the larger number. So 7 minus 4 gives me 3. And if my larger number is positive, you know, that means that uh, we're going to get a positive answer as a result. All right. So when we're multiplying or we're trying to break down polynomials, I'm sorry. When we're trying to break down polynomials, guys, it's so important to pay attention to C so we can understand the signs of our factors and what factors we could possibly use. All right, so let's look at one more problem. So in our last problem, guys, like I was saying, if we look, right, we run out all our factors. We know when we multiply, we're going to get 48. But when we combine our two terms, we're going to get a negative 16 at the, in the middle. So when I'm looking at this, right, the only two factors, if they have to have the same sign, the only two factors that will multiply to give, give me 48, and when we add, it gives me 16, would be 4 and 12, right? No other, no other factors could give us a negative 16 once we combine. So as we write this out now, we have y and 4, and then we have y and 12. And guys, based off our rules, we don't even have to think about our signs. If C is positive, right, that means our signs are going to be the same. And, in, and when we add them, it's negative. 
that means our factors are both going to be negative. So thank you guys for joining us today. This is an introductory video on factoring trinomials. Join us next time when we talk about using the slip and slide method to factor other polynomials and trinomials. Thank you for guys for joining us today.